AECOM, A-E-C-O-M company. So, so we are worldwide. I'm, I'm truly excited to be part of this team. Um, the reason why is that the workplace strategy and the change management that started 40 years ago, the pioneers who wrote these, these theories and these ideas were Frank Duffy and the folks at DEG, DEGW and Dr. Fritz Steele. Um, and, and what's interesting, it's ironic now that AECOM purchased that company 10 years ago and such. And, and that company, DGW, also provided us with um, hands-on consultancy back in the 90s when this first started to be implementing in the workplace, in, in the corporate arena, which was pharmaceuticals and, and financial service, financial companies who had, you know, the, 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 the income and had, had the, the, the power to be able to implement these. Um, and, and it's really exciting to be able to return or actually come, come to home where you know, where it's all originated, but the stuff that AECOM is doing and the team that we have in Strategy Plus that I'm, I'm part of, it just, it's unbelievable the potentials um, that, that we have. So I'm, I'm, again, I'm truly excited to be here and share and, and yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And we actually had an interview with Elvira Munoz as well, just a month ago or something. Yeah, and I love her. She was one of my tutors and yeah. Uh, yeah. It's yeah, it's funny. amazing the work, uh, what your team are doing. I, I believe it's, it's amazing. Yeah, I, I met Elvira, the, my second, um, I, I landed, I started on a, on a Friday, Monday, I was to LA and I came back to New York City and we met, uh, she, she had a, uh, a lecture, she was amazing, yeah, so it, it really does get me excited that we, you know, and I think at a global level, it's exciting now because we do have people who are understanding the workplace strategy aspect of it. And the change management piece is, is very, <laughs> it's very tricky. It's very, um, it's, it's not, it's the unknown and it's the missing piece, but it's probably one of the most important pieces of it. So if we're already touching, what is the change management actually? Because I know that a lot of people are not familiar even with the term. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so it's cultura. It, it's culture. It, I, I was thinking of a word or a, a, to be very <laughs> quick and direct, right? <laughs> It is. It, and, and I think that it is about the behaviors. It's about the attitudes of, of, of people in these spaces. So, and, and to me, you know, uh, it, let me tell you what it's not. And maybe we could start there because I think there's a lot of un, a misunderstanding of it. 70% of change initiatives fail. You know, these are corporate initiatives like let's move to the iPhone. Let's move to SAP. Let's move to and, and so they, they put these programs out to better the company, to make, you know, better um, innovation and, and so forth, but they fail. And, and, you know, and we were asked why, why do they fail? So, so, so then when, when we change people's environments, their workplaces, it is very emotional for people. So, so there, there lies the, the, the notion that change management and what we do is we're changing, um, we're changing the mindset the heart, right? The three brains, the mind, the, the heart and the gut. And we're aligning those and we're saying, look, we're, we're going to take you through a transformative journey from A to point B and point B is better. And it, but it has to be better, right? It can't be, it can't be, it can't be fake. It can't be, well, we're going to change the SAP because it's better and it's not right. Or I, I don't, I don't mean that SAP is bad or not. I'm just giving an example or yeah. my, you know, so, so to be, to, to, to be clear again, it, it is about cultura. It's about those changes of behaviors and it is changing the mindset of change management, the management and, and your own management, the, the way you manage your life, the way you, you know, your, your, your department manages the way that, the team is set up in the culture. So when you think change management, you also have to look internally and internally to the teams. And in my experience, we've, the hardest piece of this thing is the leadership, right? Yeah. But the hardest piece is also ourselves and the team. So when, when we're delivering these change programs, sometimes our own team members are not on board. So we have to almost, from a, from a workplace change management perspective, our stakeholders, our clients are, our, our employees. It's not the client outside, it's, the, it's ourselves. So we have to not only help the employees move from a, a way of working that they're doing now to a completely new way of working, but we also have to take the entire stakeholder, including ourselves and the team, to be able to, to implement that change. And there's really four principles that I, I use, and that I've, 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 I, for this meeting I, I, I created four. It's, it's health, wealth, love, and happiness. And, and so these, are, 
wealth, health, yeah, and yeah health, wealth, love, and happiness. Yeah, very beautiful. And, and, <laughs> it, oh, oh, it sounds you and me love that, right? But management, they don't care. No, 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 no. The money. Yeah. What, what's going? I don't care. Where are the money? <laughs> Come on, I don't care if you're happy. But here's the. This is where the education is. No, we do care. Listen, we do care about health. We we want healthy employees, right? And and these spaces and 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 the empowerment and the and the change of the culture will allow for healthy healthy employees. It it my experience has allowed people to be with their kids playing you know at the soccer game at three four p.m. because they're allowed to, you know that ten years ago that was unheard of. Everybody had to be in the office, so it's not healthy if you're always in the office and panic because my leader my manager is managing from an industrial revolution like I'm a factory worker. Yeah. I went to I got an MBA. I went to college. I'm an adult. So now you have kids coming out of college going, what are you putting me in a cube for? <laughs> I'm going to go over there where they actually care. So it is about healthy. It is about healthy revenues. And I think that's the, under, the other piece that people don't understand is that this isn't kumbaya, let's all sing and be happy. No, this is a, a very genuine happiness of saying, or healthiness of saying, hell, heck, we need to be healthy. We need to be empowered and we need to focus on what we're doing so that we can create revenue for the company and that we can be rewarded ourselves. And that's healthy, you, you, you know, and, and all the created the ecosystem around that. The wealth part is wealth of time. We're giving people time back. Time is precious and speed of business is fast. We want to reduce those, 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 those decision times. The decision-making capacity in an organization is where it, the innovation is, and that's the collaboration that has to happen. So when we talk wealth, it's not just about profits and making money. It's important, and we're a business, and we have to address that, or else management's just going to throw you out of the room. So management's going to love the fact that, wow, okay, I get it. We're, we're going to make money. Yes, we're going to make money, but we're also, go we're also going to make revenues on the long term, you know, the intangibles around this. So that's the wealth part of, of, of giving people the time, the energy around it, the innovation that comes out of it so that the company is wealthier and that's so that we ourselves are, are, are obviously going to make more money and climb the ladder or, or be empowered to choose our careers. And, and also the choice in that, in that where I can do my best work is wealth, is, is wow, I, I have a culture that allows me to be in Moscow right now and do my work you know, for my folks in LA. Yeah. The, the love part is, is, is you got to love what you do. And, and, I, and if you look at, you look at studies, 75% of employees are disengaged. They're not happy. They're sitting there clicking and going, I have a paycheck, COVID-19. I don't want to lose my job. I will sit here and do whatever, the minimum it takes. I will not do a thing. I don't, they don't care. I don't care. That's disengagement. So what we're saying is, is 20 to 30% of your staff is pulling this entire company. It's, that it, it, it's unsustainable. So you have to love what you do. You have to love the vision of the company. You have to align it and say, wow, I work for X, Y, Z. We make tires. So what's the vision and mission of the company? Am I aligned to that? Am I, am I engaged? These workplace strategy places, these co-working places and all of this, this is about engagement. This is about putting people together in individuals and creating teams that drive the innovation, that drive the business. But if you don't love what you do, if you don't love your coworkers, if you don't love your boss, and most people will leave their jobs, not because of open space, not because of you know, some rule or some, some value. No, it's because I hate my boss. I, I don't like my boss. So it is culture. Let's be honest. It is culture. So there, there lies the opportunity where it's a transformation. We say, what's change management? It's the caterpillar to butterfly. In most cases, we're transforming a really bad culture, industrial revolution, you know, 1910 yeah. to, to, to now we're fitting into a place that we go, look, we have, it is about speed. It's about technology, speed, decision-making, right? So what's the, you know, let, let's move these people into that space and they're all going to be faster. No, the change management is that integrated holistic process that get, that delivers that, that, that transformation of folks. What I, what I say, you know, it, it, it is about, you know, the, the, the IQ and the EQ, right? Mm -hmm. It is about the intelligent. We're, listen, it, this is intelligent. This is smart. This is why companies do this because they see the, 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 the math, the, the statistics are there. It's a no brainer, right? You, you'd be a fool not to, not, to under, not to look at them and go, my, we have to do this. But how you do it, it becomes the emotional intelligence and, and it's the hardest thing is about the culture. 
And people can only take it so far because then they go, well, my boss doesn't want to do it. So I don't know what to do. And the CEO doesn't want to do it. And the CFO doesn't want to do it. They just want to change the workplace, but not the culture. There's where now it's the EQ and say, no, there's an emotional piece. There's the heart. You're changing hearts and minds. You're changing, you're, you're, you're impacting people's lives. So this, this is where it gets really deep. And you say, look, we've got a responsibility to be very um, compassionate and empathetic and empathetic also for the leadership and say, this is not easy for you. It's not easy for the CEO and the C-suite. They've been driving this business, man, maybe for 70 years, 100 years, 20 years, whatever it be. And it, they got to this point because of how successful they have been. But look, innovation, it's not about something new. It's just about putting things together in a wholly new, different way and being empathetic to the leadership and saying, you know, you, you have a responsibilities and you have to lead by this, but also empathetic to the people who you're going to change, which is everyone, including yourself. So I'll pause there because I've talked too much. I'm just, I, no, I just love it because I have so many, I, I will just a little bit sum up what we already discussed. Uh, so that uh, we're t we, when we're talking to change about the change management, we actually talking about the culture and also we're speaking about changing people, people's behavior and actually habits and uh, emotions about what is going uh, around them. So it's very deep work and it uh, starts with leaderships. Uh, when, we do, uh, when we explain the, these four elements that you, uh, you just said, uh, health, wealth, love, and, uh, and, 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 hap and happiness. And, happiness. And, and being happy, and that, and that is sort of taboo in corporate or in the environments, but you want happy people because happy people equals happy revenues. And we, uh, when we uh, implement four of these elements, we can say actually that people are much more engaged uh, to the work, what they are doing. And it's uh, direct um, investment uh, into the company's profit, actually. Uh, and I would also say uh, the, mind, uh, the, the thought that I had uh, during you, you were describing it, that it's such a beautiful world that you're describing and it's the world where people actually want to live where they yes. uh, work uh, w when they're doing the work that they love and when they're really uh, engaged uh, in the work that they're doing and also they can control um, you know, their personal life and their work life and all are happy like people and companies as well so it's kind of a world that everyone wants, uh, both uh, employees and the um, leadership. And why, why then it's so difficult to implement these changes? How do you think? <laughs> because yeah. it's, it's really difficult to explain it, for both of these sides. <laughs> it, 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 listen, I can show you my scars, my bruises, <laughs> the torture that I've had. It is, it is one of the, and, and look, I did this for many 17, 20 years. I left because it was, I left corporate life because it was so, um, it was so hard and it, it really will, will, will take a toll. But the reward afterwards is, 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 yeah. is, is impressive. The, the seeing this not, and see, I think most people focus on the space and they take the cornet and the beautiful pictures of the atrium and look at the, the bio, the plant wall that we created and we're creating this ecosystem oh by the way sorry yeah. sorry for interrupting just yeah. for one who for ones who still don't actually understand what why we are talking about it because when we speak about changes uh, significant changes in the space it's always changes in the behavior and in the culture so that's why we need to do all of this uh, thing together uh, uh, yeah absolutely so so again the, the culture side is that it is about people and you, need, and you need to have a team of people that can talk in multi-languages, right? C-suite language, right? It's a little bit of an HR in this, a little bit, you know, when we, when we started this, we wanted HR to be part of this. And they said, no, 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 you guys do it. You know, we're, we're, coming from, we're coming from facilities. We're coming from real estate. They, don't, they, they think we change light bulbs. What, what are, who are we to change culture? So, so when, when, when we created these, these, these programs, we, we, we were smart enough to, well, my leaders at, at the time at Novartis, because they had, we, we had the best of the best consultants come in and create that integrated, holistic, um, we even had industrial psychologists, uh, we, we had psychologists, we had coaches, uh, leadership coaches, you know, th this, is, this is about changing hearts and minds, and, and it's very hard, because what happens is you don't, it's the frozen tundra call. The middle management, God bless them, they, they mean well. 
they, they really, they want to work. Yeah. But, but they're, the, the, the upper leadership and then the work, the, the workers at the bottom, that sometimes the top and the bottom get it, but the middle don't. So the top is saying, yeah, we, we get it. Nelson, do it. And then when we get to the middle management, they have no idea what's happening. <laughs> So, yeah. so this, so, I know it. <laughs> so there, and look, and this happens in our own departments and our own, our own families, like my mom and, you know, my own family, right? So the hardest thing is, unfortunately, is working within the family. So within the company is the hardest, but it's easy when you can consult and a company hires you to, t- you can tell them, no, you're not doing it right. Do it this way. And they'll, they'll listen, but your own company, your own family, right? Even our own selves, the hardest piece is the, the is the convincing, right? I, I always say my hardest change management when I did Philadelphia, GlaxoSmithKline in Philadelphia, it was 1,300 people who lived and worked for 30 years in downtown um, Philadelphia. We, we moved them to South Philly, 10 minutes away, and it was Armageddon. And I said there was 1,300 people that hated me, that did not like me at all. I'm exaggerating, but I, I was not that, I was not, a, they didn't like me. And then they loved me afterwards, I hope. But I said that it was 1,300 plus one. It was my wife. Like okay. my <laughs> wife from moving from North Jersey down to South Jersey. Oh, holy crap. I, I, had to, I, had to, I had to do an incomplete change management in my own house, right? But it is about the facts. It is about having the ability to be empathetic and being able to reach and touch that person and being creative. You know, if the leader liked horses, I would go buy, I'd go rent a horse, you know, I'd go ride, I'd ride a horse so I could be with the leaders to say, hey, listen to, you know, try to get, try to understand this and, and, and being, and, and to me, it's that chocolate, you know, Godiva chocolate in the middle and get somebody to taste it. And, and once they taste it, they lock in. So it's, it's, it's stakeholder analysis. It's finding those allies that can help you as a, a collective team reach the leader, right? Reach the, the, the C-suite. So that they can understand. It's a great that. point. It's just yeah. a really great point. I want to just highlight it. So sure. to find an alien uh, in in this uh, environment that actually hates you, <laughs> who will yeah. uh, try to help you to implement this uh, yeah. and explain it. And and no matter what, I don't care if you get. Um, and we've had, we had situations at Novartis. We had Frank Geary, Tato Ando, the best architects. I mean, they created buildings that were just magnificent. But if you don't get the leadership involved and, to, and get them to buy in and also help them, give them the tools that they have to model this, that they have to sponsor this. And I was very lucky at Novartis. I was on, um, you know, I had a sword. They gave me a sword. And then I remember the, the entire Basel team uh, that came. They had a $2 billion investment. And this is an investment in people. It's not, it's not expense. This is an investment in people. And they said, look, we've got a $2 billion campus expansion in Basel. How are we going to get our people to, to work differently? So they, they did that five, six years before us. So they came over to New York City. We had Gensler. We had all these consultants and DGW. And they basically looked at me and they said, look, you're the new change manager. Here's the sword. And here's the, <laughs> and here's the CEO's business card. Go change the culture. And yeah, I was like, idea. <laughs> uh, what? 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 No, they change a pharmaceutical culture? No, no. But we got very creative, and, but we had leadership engagement. We had, I put on a slide, my first slide, I showed Dr. Dan Vassella's picture with his quote, this is where we're going. And, and, and we had strong leadership. And we, and, and, you know, we cascaded that down and we made an intent to go down leader to leader to leader to leader. And, and it was about change. And we had a very, we, we, we spent time on, the, on a very important message, right? Very consistent messaging. But the, from, from Dr. Dan Vassella all the way down to the people who clean the floors, we interacted with every single one, most important, the management, the leadership, to, for them to say, yes, we understand, we approve this. We don't, we, don't, we don't like it. You don't have to like it, but you have to at least sponsor us. You have to at least be a partner in this so that when we get into those difficult situations, which we will, we, we, we can all work together and it's a top down. Very rarely did we have to pick up the phone and go, hey, I need your help to, to unstick this. We had a couple of situations where we'd had to do that, but the leadership engagement, if you don't get your local CEO and your local folks in, involved in this, it doesn't matter what you design. It doesn't matter what you do. You can get the best vitra furniture in there. It won't be used. And you're gonna have a waste of money. You're gonna say, well, why, did, why didn't it work? I totally agree. Uh, I have so many of uh, examples here in Russia when it's uh, beautiful interiors, uh, quite significant change for the companies, but it just doesn't work. 
right? Correct. Correct. So the, the leadership engagement is, is super, uh, super important. The other thing that's very important is uh, four things. I think next question was, uh, you know, what are the key elements of the change management? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll address that. Um, I, it's got to be aligned. So, so this is where also I think where, where folks make a mistake. Um, so, so this has been going on for 20 years and, and, and I sometimes feel like it's, it's been templated, you know, like just take the template, check off the process and we're good. No, it, it can't. It has to be aligned to the company. It has to be customized for the group, for the company. I used to be a volunteer fireman, right? I, I need to speak to them and I need to, yeah, I, I, I was yeah, many moons ago. So, um, and, 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 and it's a, it's understanding your audience, but understanding your internal culture. And there's where I said about cultura, that it is about what is our vision? What is our mission? What do we do? Let's align it to that. There has to be an alignment to it, to the company. It, it has to be efficient. It has to be effective as a process. And it also has to be agile. Because as you know, with this COVID and everything that's, that happens within the 18 months, right? Two years of project, right? From design from conception to fruition and pictures and champagne, right? Two, three years. It's a long time and things change in our, in our world. Things change in our business. So it has to, the process itself has to be the example of where the company, what it, who it is and where it wants to go. And it has to be, has to have those four elements because it has to be nimble and agile and it has to take into account all the, the changes that happen from the external and elements and the ex external marketplace. Sometimes it, it's about, we, we acquired a company. Oh my God, now we have to integrate two cultures or we are selling a division or we're moving to Mars. <laughs> what? <laughs> so no, yeah, you know these projects, something, somebody always has a crazy idea and then yeah. what, <laughs> what? Or the budget has been slashed. I had my friends in, um, well, Carola, Car Carola, you know, the budget was slashed 50%. What do you do? Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna have kids, you know, build out the branding. You know, you, you, get, you, get, you have to have a process that is very agile again, that allows for that flexibility to place. And, and it has to be efficient and effective. And it has to be continuous improvement as well. And I also think this, uh, why is this so? It's because it's so connected to people's psychology, actually. So, yeah, and no. each company and each leadership, they are just different. So we have to approach them differently, right? Absolutely, but I'll give you two, two things you have to answer. We're all human beings. I've done change management across the, across the globe and, and now in Russia, I hope. I hope you guys invite me there because I, I, I missed the World we'll Cup. Be happy. <laughs> I, I missed the World Cup. I, my, my heritage is Colombian, so you guys know that we like to party. So we're, we're good partiers too. So um, the two things you have to answer for change management, very simple. You got to keep things very simple. What's in it for the company? What's in it for me? You answer those two questions for people, you got them. You got 50% of the, 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 the people. It's good for the company because we're investing in our people and we are going to um, be competitive in this environment. We need to be innovative, right? We need to, we need to have a culture that's empowering, innovative, and so forth. And we're, we're moving in this direction because we have to keep our doors open. This is about business sustainability. It's an easy, it's not easy, it's hard conversation with CEOs, but you have to talk their language. You can't go in there and say, oh, it's going to be happy. What? Again, <laughs> what? What? Yeah. <laughs> but, but I will tell you, CEOs and I, I have friends who are CEOs and now through my experience and we talk and they say, number one thing, top talent. I need, they stay up at night because they don't have the right talent. And, and, and you see where this goes back to culture, cultura. This is about having the right people. And it doesn't mean firing Nelson because ah, he doesn't, he, ah, he's not engaged. No, Nelson, get him engaged and then he becomes a superstar. I've seen that transformation. That's the rewarding part about these spaces when we talk about that because sometimes people are hidden, they're hiding, not by, not by choice, just by the way it is. You, you got a, you're, in a, you're in a department of 150 people. The vice president or the president of, doesn't even know your name and you got a great idea. So this is where the connectivity, the interaction, and the spaces lend to interaction where, oh my God, Nelson has a great idea. Now my vice president knows my name. I, I feel I, I want to come to work and they say hello. And I'm now involved in projects that I should be involved. And I think most of us are, are, in these, are sometimes in these cultures or in these you know, work environments that we're, we're not happy because we're not, we're not unleashed we're not unleashing the full potential of the people. 
to simple symbolize. So change. I wish I would have started with that. <laughs> would have saved yeah, a lot of time. But, but it's, it's a, no, no, no. It's very yeah. <laughs> but but it is about unleashing the full potential of people, teams, in the company, and 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 the the vehicle is the change management, but but also the vehicle is the workplace. Um, so so all of that integrated uh, allows for that to happen. Hope I answered that. <laughs> Oh, that, that's just such a big amount of information because it's very, very important topic. And what you, we discussed it, uh, like a half of the time we discussed actually that how important to convince uh, the leadership actually and to change their behavior and their acceptance of this change. And I, I believe that it's crucial uh, at the moment, especially in the time that we are actually existing with this uh, COVID yeah. uh, system that. Okay, we will touch this uh, sure. question later a little bit, yeah. but still, how do you think, uh, but not how do you think, but how you actually uh, implement the change management, what, what actually change management uh, consultants do uh, when they come to the project and when the project of change management should start and when it mm -hmm. ends, well, like, Sure. Yeah, yeah, great. great. So, so it is the start and end, and, and, and that's, this is very important also. You know, folks, folks who do change management like myself, we like to be in the room way early with the leadership so, so that change management is not as, I started by saying, let me tell you what it, not, it is not. It is, and, and most people think that it's when, when a leader or someone makes a bad decision, then it's Nelson, go tell the people that they're moving in three months and not next week. Or they're moving next week instead of three months from now. That is not change management. Not, change management is not, we're moving from 22 inch monitors to 27 inch monitors. Nelson, go tell the people, the audience, that is not change management. Change management is when a leader says, I want 19 inch monitors everywhere. And we go, no, that's not our program. We weren't dual monitors because our people work in this way, blah, blah. And ha so early in the stage, it's very important to have change management because this is where you're, you're negotiating with the leadership and you're changing things up front that will impact and, and save money, save time, save, save our sanity in the project downstream. And it also is about sustainability in the space. So it has to be early. So, so when, when we talk about the life cycle of the project, it almost is continuous in essence because it doesn't change because it doesn't stop because you want this new culture to continue once you're in the space and you need to make sure that up the upfront that we are un uncoupling old ways of working, older, older ideas, older um, energies. And, and what we're saying, there's a new energy we wanna take you to. There's a new paradigm. It's a shift in paradigm. We know, most people, you know, we know what we know and we know we don't know some things and there's things that we don't, we know, we don't know that we don't know. And that's the, the, the beauty of this is that we know what that utopia will look like. We know that that new paradigm will work because it, it's, it's already been done in the past. These leaders and folks do not. So it's, it's early to get them to own the, you know, get them to understand it and to own it up in the beginning. And then throughout the process, it will be a lot easier. You know, and, and so, Actually, so we, we can say that the, the change management process starts just when the first thoughts of the whole project are coming. Absolutely. To the, to the, yeah. It has to be in a dialogue and it has to be continuous through the process and it has to be obviously sustaining it as well. I think some of the mistakes that we made is that we take the pictures, we have a celebration and we're, 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 we're gone. And then yeah. you hope that the culture stays, but what happens is you have new leaders, you have new people coming in so there's a sustainability model that I, I, I say has to happen after the, the, the projects are completed as well. And actually it's very similar to how people um, used to new habits. Uh, first they have to prepare themselves and then yeah. they, they uh, change to these uh, new habits and then they have to have some kind of a period uh, to, to keep doing this and then yeah. Yeah, and it, and it is the, you know, the, the, the change curve, um, you know, it, it really, you know, when we talk about dollars and cents, you know, when you don't have change management, you have emotional, you go down, you go down into depression, right? And yeah. you don't, that will cause lack of productivity. And, and so this is where it started, you know, the, the real, the, the, where it started. So 
we talk about uh, flattening the curve. So you want to flatten that, that dip, right? You want to dip and you want to flatten the time, the X and Y axis. You want to flatten the time it takes for the change to happen. What we used to do is expect the time to when people move in, then they change. And then they go, oh my God, now I'm different. Oh, help me, Nelson. So then obviously we help them afterward. But the real, is, the real notion is that we start changing behaviors and attitudes earlier. So mm -hmm. the time, the, the time is, is shrunk. And then the, the dip of that is, is shrunk. So that's, that's dollars and cents for, for, the, for management. What happens is we, we don't, we, we, what I, I like, I don't like the change curve. I like the upward curve. Yeah. Where we're now bridging, we're bridging that, we're bridging that, 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 that bottom loop, right? And we're bridging that so that we can launch them. So now we're giving them awesome technology. We're giving them beautiful spaces. We're giving them this place of, of empowerment and, and, and so that they can now be innovative and drive the company upward. And that's the, that's the cool part about what, what, what this does, that it is about flattening those curves, those X and Y axis, but also really launching the organization, the people, so that they can be truly innovative and drive the business yeah, and be happy. Yeah, that's, that's great because actually very often what we see when people are moving to a very beautiful space uh, with new design and so on, they're just not happy. They, they want to come back to their old offices. And they, that's so pity for, for all, for leadership, for designers, for all team, for the budget they spend on this. <laughs> right, right. And, and, and you know, and, and if you, if, I don't know if you guys, uh, Simon Sinek, if you look at Simon Sinek's, yeah. It's, it's the ad adaptation curve. So what I was talking about was the adaptation curve on the positive side. So you have your innovators, right? You have your, your early adopters, but then you have the folks who take a longer time. And that's what I said about being empathetic is that, you know, to deliver the change, you also have to be creative and you also have to understand who your audience is within the organization. So for us, we have a lot of engineering folks who are very analytical, but also very introverted, right? They're not like me who's going to come on talking to Moscow and, uh, on, a, on a Facebook, you know, they're, <laughs> hey, Nelson, here's the data. You, you say it. We have to understand and be empathetic. There's different styles and, and people take time. And that's why the importance of it being early and having it just consistent through because what's really cool is to me is Vladimir, who's like this. And I had Vladimir at Novartis. He's a, he's a, he was a scientist, you know, medical doctor scientist who did not like me. Vladimir is going to be like, I don't want to do this. When <laughs> Vladimir or my father, Luis Morales, when we moved him down the shore, it was stubborn. I know, I know Russia, very <laughs> stubborn. Colombian and Russian, very similar. Yeah. Funny, but stubborn. You have those people, and that's the rewarding part. They, the, the people who were the hardest people, are the, they become the ambassadors. Yeah. And it doesn't matter about age. I will tell you, some of the hardest people we got to change now are these kids coming out of university. I thought they were easier because they're moving and shaking. No. Some of my 62, you know, these 62 year old people, they're like, they want to be, they're re-energized, but it is about re-energizing. But it also is, that's why the timetable is important. And also the amount of information you put out there, especially with COVID now and all the strategies and all the, the information overload it, it's interesting how when we talk about people's workplace, they pay attention to that. And, and that's where I think the advantage of a workplace transition is so important and the change management because it really is about changing what purpose, process, people in place. You can really change the entire organization culturally because people are emotionally tied to their workspace. Oh my God, they're moving me to a new building. I'm going to lose yeah. all these pictures of my sons and my daughters and my, my walls. And I love these walls. And, you know, no, it's, 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 you have to love your job and you do your job now anywhere. And that's the, the empowerment part about it. So it also is paying attention, again, like I was saying, paying attention to people's different styles. And that's why the, the, the length of it is very important, right? The, the, the length, oh, time-wise. Yeah. And also the amount of information and how you do it. You know, I, 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 I was very creative. And they, I think I, 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 they allowed me to be very creative in, in Novartis and GSK, where I could get a plane and write it on in the sky if I had to, you know, it, it's, it's being, it's being like, how, how do we do this so that people can pay attention that it's fun. Also, another thing, it has to be fun. It has to be real and it is real. And that's why I get excited because I have the statistics that I know this is yeah. going to work. It's, this isn't about 
salesperson or I'm selling this because. And then what people recognize, like, oh my God, this is different. Like every other initiative in the company, they were just trying to make me just do something I didn't want to do. And now this is about engaging and having them own the change. Not, and we're not doing this to you. We're doing this, you own it, you learn it, and now you do it. Because look, good, bad, or indifferent, you're going to move to the space. If you don't want to adapt, if you don't want to understand and listen, you're going to have a tough time in the new space because the train has left the station. You're not going back to the old space. And this is where management will say, and I'll be very open and candid here with you. And that's why you need strong leadership to say, if our people do not want this culture, then leave our culture, leave the company. And, and, and it sounds so rude, like, oh, how can you say that? Look, about 10, 15% of your people aren't gonna be, they're not gonna be here because they're not going to like that new way. They're not gonna like the new collaboration. They're not gonna like the empowerment. Unfortunately, they're going to not be part of the new culture. And that's a very leadership, that's very important for leadership to, to, to make that statement. And I was lucky enough to have that, where it's a, it's a and, it, and it's, it's statistics and our, our, our statistics show that, that those folks do not, um, be, do not belong, do not want to come along on that. And, and another thing that's very important too, and let me just plug in my laptop, I apologize, but yes, I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't wanna lose you guys. Um, a very important notion to that is also that the loudest people, and this is, this is I think, in, in all of our lives, the five percenters, the 10 percenters, will make the biggest noise. Oh, this can't work. This isn't, we're, we're different. We're from Moscow. We're Russian. We're not United States. No, 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 those guys don't know what they're doing. This is Russia, Moscow. Do you know we are different? Let me just tell you something. You've been in Moscow, yeah? <laughs> I've, been, I, I, I've been to my, I have my, I have friends, I have Russian friends. I, I, I love them. Yeah, but I see. They're, <laughs> but they're, you guys are stubborn. You guys are stubborn and you think, you know, you guys are smart and, you, and smart and stubborn equals I know best. So, so this is about, this is a, this is about a, a notion of, look, um, we're going in this direction and, and the loudest people are the ones who are the, the ones that don't want to change. And, and that's where, that's when we go to, back to Simon Sinek is focus on the early adopters, focus on those people that become change agents that will help their friends and counterparts within the organization. So this isn't top-down leadership. This is from all sideways and also engaging some people within the organization, within the teams that really understand this, that like this, that can then be teachers, that can be friends. Because I need, if I'm doing a project in Moscow, I'm not telling Moscow how to do it. No, 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 no. I need you guys to learn it. And then you guys help me talk to Mos to talk to your, to your comrades. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so the, the notion is that sometimes the loudest voices, it's, they're the minority. They're the ones who are scared. They're the ones who perhaps have something to hide. You know, I've had leaders in my pharmaceutical world, you know, they were the worst and I was scared of them. I was a very young and I was scared of the leaders. And then I, and then I see that they got, you know, three, three months later, they moved on or now they're running a, a country or they got fired, <laughs> you know, and then it was like, wait a minute, these leaders are human beings, but they also are very important. Um, and, and we need to make sure that all voices of her are heard, are listened, are understood. But honestly, the five percenters sometimes cause the most drama in a change. And you eliminate, you know, you, you know how you eliminate that? You don't focus on it. And we got to be very strong and say, no, we're moving in this direction. We're moving this direction and repetitive. We're moving this direction and we're going to help you. And sometimes, like I said, out of those five to 10, five percenters, there are some that I call them the dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. But if you don't adapt, and, and we are in a phase now in humanity with everything, if you don't adapt, it's Darwin. You're not going to survive. And, I, and this is important for that leadership, that CEO C-suite. You just got to say two words, business continuity, business sustainability. We will not exist if our competition is doing a culture change because the people around here for $5 more now, they're going to go over there because they give them Apple laptops, they give them coffee, but it's not just that it's the cultura that we're striving for. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think here's a few very important things uh, like, 
first of all, uh, what you said about people who leave the company if they don't uh, belong here. And actually, it's, yeah, it's tough. Uh, people don't want to see it sometimes, but it's needed for, to, to have what you actually described, to, to have the employees who love their job. And if they don't belong here, they will never uh, will be able to love it, actually. Exactly. And it causes problems um, when, and, and look, we're all human beings, and that's why we have a change process to, to you know, help transition people. But the important thing is to focus on the folks who really understand it. Um, and they will help, hopefully, they will help the other people. But you, know, you don't hear much, and I, even in my uh, journey in my experience, you don't hear much of that, what I just said, it might be very controversial, but it's the reality. Um, you cannot be successful if you have people sabotaging yeah. the process, sabotaging the process, Sa because, you know, it's very simple, because when you, when, you, when you show leadership and you say, look, we are going to be a better company, we're going to survive, we're going to be happy and all the things, then you got to turn around and you say, well, someone who doesn't want to do that, after you explain it to them, if they don't want to do that, then where, where's, where's their heart? They're not part of our culture. They're not part of our vision and mission, are, are we? So again, it's, 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 it starts really yeah. changing, changing the mindset and, and attracting and retaining top talent. That's one of the things that we started with. And I see people talk, they put it into their presentations, but they don't really understand it. This is about attracting but retaining the talent, right? For a long time. And in this day and age, we have kids coming out of school that their program is two years, I'm out. Two years, I'm out, right? I'm gonna learn, 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 and keep, and I wanna be a CEO. I wanna be a billionaire. Okay. <laughs> but we, we, we wanna, we want to, you know, we want, there's, and, and I think also, you know, there's a little bit of lack of loyalty, you know, and that, that, that hence, hence where, you know, you want to you want to create an environment that truly is authentically helping you as an as an employee and and empowering you and 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 you know, creating that that super employee, but also so that employee also gives back. You know, so it is that it is that bartering. We forget about money. It, we people don't leave because of money. Like I said, they leave because of their boss, right? But we want to get paid well, right? We want to we want to we want to live. And it's really, it's Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Yeah. I just want a roof. I want a car. I want nice, you know, clothes. I want security. I don't want, I want to have a job. I want to be safe. I want a place where, again, remember the healthy part? I want a place where it's healthy for me and, and I can be safe. Love and belonging. We're human beings. I think, and with this COVID-19, the real psychological, this is a psychological torture test, right? This is where we are social beings that need to be connected. My mother retired from her company. It was Tiffany and Company where they make all that rings and she worked in, in, in the US. And, and my mom was like, you know, social butterfly and, you know, she got a, she retired, but it, it hurt her because she lost her friends. She was that ch chit chat and talking and, and this is what we do. We, we are social beings. We are, we are exchanging ideas. We need that contact. We need the love and belonging, belonging to a team, to a part, right? That's why volunteer firemen and teams and, you know, it is about that. But it's also about, you know, mastering ourselves. And we want to be a good person, but we want an, an ecosystem that allows that to happen. So there goes that bartering where employees will make an investment in you and you make an investment in the company. And, you know, I, I talked to CFOs and CEOs. They said, well, what if we invest all this money and they just leave. And the, the thing is, well, what if we don't and they stay? <laughs> what, if, what if we don't invest and they stay? What do you have there? And that's where, oh my God, yeah, oh, okay, now, how do you do it? Change management. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. Strategy. <laughs> and uh, about the post COVID, uh, how do you think? Uh, is the change management actually important in post COVID world and how it actually can help? Because I see that how actually it's important yeah oh yeah i, I and i and, and right and 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 i, and I think the the it's so important um i was on a call yesterday internally with aecom folks some some real and i gotta say there's some really i feel like i'm the 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 the, the dumb one at the table i feel <laughs> like i'm i'm so blessed and i'm in my career i'm so, so blessed and that you need to be in those positions because if you're the smartest person at the table then you're in the wrong position. You're in the wrong, you're in the wrong meeting. You want to be in my position where I'm like, 
I'm, I'm like, wow, these people are so smart. <laughs> um, so, and, and we had a conversation that the change management, it, it will be the single handedly. And I'm, I'm happy to say, cause it's it, it, for my sustainability, my <laughs> future, um, it, it is going to be a very important piece because it is moving from an old energy and COVID and, and look, I'll be honest with you and, and talking to my friends, we have an opportunity now for, for humans and for the evolution of, of humankind. I hate to be so dramatic, but it's true. There's an old energy that, that we were living in. And, and, and I think it was, it was absolutely unhealthy. We can't live that way. We have to evolve. We, this is an opportunity to evolve. COVID-19 created awareness. It's, it's, let's look at the positive, right? It's created an awareness. It's created the sense of, oh my God, I can work from home. So, so in, in AECOM, right, in, in other companies where, no, everybody has to come into the office. And, and now it's like, well, change management leaders, now leaders need us because now we need to help leaders. How do you manage in a distributed work environment? How do we manage in what's, what's new? And, and, you know, I think people are focused from an architectural perspective about, well, do we put in this open space, do we put now, you know, plastic and we put protection and masks and what is our preparedness and everyone's got this energy around all this stuff and what they're lacking what they're missing is culture yeah. is, is 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 helping people be adults right hey how from a common sense perspective for now if we're allowing people to work from home then why don't we focus on a culture that allows full empowerment to choose you, choose where you do your work so well are we going to have an, a, a headquarters do we invest in campuses you know, in my opinion, it's, it's a distributed workplace now. Now you have a laptop, you have a phone, you have this, and you have your brain and a note and a pencil, you work anywhere. So leaders already, you know, executive leaders are already working this way. They're working in airports, they're working in a, in a very hyper mobile way. And, and I think that we have to allow people to choose that whole spectrum, whether you want to be hyper, because I think that, you know, four things that we do in the office, we, we learn, we lead, we collaborate, and we focus, right? As, as, as knowledge workers. And, and, and so, so these are, like, I'm talking about more knowledge workers from an office worker perspective, because yeah. I, I think I just remembered something that's very important. The workplace, we keep focusing on the office, and I'll, and I'll speak to that right now, but there's a tremendous amount of other workplaces like farms, right? Like manufacturing, we've not, we haven't even thought to, to consider those as workplaces and that's the future is how do we help those people right let me go back to the office about yeah. choice and empowerment because this really fits across every industry across every workplace including a bus driver it's about empowering that person so that that person probably knows his or her job the best so what, what the change management does when we talked about you know having them own the process is collaboratively and together what is the best way the best choices the best environments for me to for me to do my best work i might be a journalist i might be a teacher so we have to create spaces that allow for that and and truth be told they're already there starbucks co-working spaces train station they all have wi-fi a restaurant if you go into a restaurant at 10 o'clock 10 o'clock in the morning it's empty so why not use that as a meeting space and then it turns into a lunch where, where do the best ideas come from? In the shower, at the bar, watching a soccer game. In the train, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on a train, golfing, and, you know, yeah. and, and, and drinking and BSing with our friends, right? So, so we have to take advantage and we have, to, we have to allow this culture aspect that we say, look, we need to empower our employees. We need to have a, a different, and, and change management, right? Changing the management. The, the, the mindset of how we go, how are we going to manage our people? So we need coaching. We need to, we need to help our leaders lead better. And, 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 you know, I think one of the, when we talked, and I talked about the middle management, you know, I, I, we're missing, I think, some educational aspects to, to, to managing in a new environment. And that's what our change management process does. It really dusts off those management training materials that we've learned or maybe they've never had training and it is about empowering the leaders to 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 now lead in a in a different environment and i apologize there's some lawn work outside is that bothering you no no, no i didn't hear it don't worry okay good you know and and when i talk to leaders you know having 
in the change management, you have to have a change management process. So you have to, you have to change leaders. You have, it's, it's important. It, I, I missed that. I apologize. Yeah. But, but you, but you got to give them the, the tools, you know, you can't just tell them where we're going to do this. You know, a lot of them want to do the right thing. So you have to give them the tool sets. And that's why we bring in some, some ex executive coaches and I can also, you know, help with that, with that conversation. But you know, we want them to lead as leaders. We tell them, look, in army and in, in, in military, if you're a good leader, you're going to lead anywhere in a jungle and in an open space. And what they find in my experience is after they move into these spaces, they go, oh, my God. Yeah, they become more powerful. I think leaders also feel that if they lose their office, they lose the status symbol. They lose my diplomas. The, you know, I am a leader and they won't respect me. It is about respect. And I think what leaders notice, and this is culturally, right? And, you know, if you go to Tokyo, Japan, you better have, you know, what we did in Japan for Novartis is that we had an, a, a specific office to demonstrate that they had power, right? But it was shared. So whenever we br they brought in an external client, they had the office. Wow. <laughs> but that office was used by everybody else the rest of the day. So you, ha so you have to be creative and you have to work, work with the leadership. But going back to that, that leaders can then lead now post COVID. I think we have a great opportunity because we are already distributed. It's now, how do we, how do we manage a distributed team? And it goes back to culture. There are some jobs that obviously cannot be virtual, cannot, it's just impossible. So you have, a, we have a mixed bag of people. So we have a mixed way of not a mixed way, but one way that covers everything by saying, look, we trust you. You have to trust us. We have to create that trust in our, in our culture so that we don't, trust is important. We're fighting together. This, if we don't have trust, if we don't have collaboration, yeah. we are going to die. This is, this is like fighting a fire in firemen. Look, all of, all of my friends in the fire department came from different backgrounds, diversity, you know? And some of them maybe didn't like some of the views that I had, and I didn't like some of the views that I, they had. But when we were in that fire, when we were in that war, when we were in that soccer game, we are working as a team and the teams that win have a chemistry and a culture and that's set by leadership and it's set by forth the entire ethos of why we're doing this. And we will kill our, you know, we will fight work 24 hours a day. We will score that goal. We will do whatever it takes. And you look at the teams that win, win the UEFA, win the world cup that win, you know, you go, wow. And you, and when you look, it's that chemistry, it's that individual, that teamwork, and that's that, that sort of leadership. Not, it is the leadership that allows for that. And, and look, in some of these cases, we have to be vulnerable. So we don't have the answers. I, 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 maybe some leaders go, gosh, Nelson, and we help. We help, and, and, we're, and, and I've had those 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night phone calls with some, some of these high-level leaders at Novartis. And, you know, and we could be, it was friendship. And it was like, hey, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to say. And, and it was really cool how we collaborated, but it was about, you know, this cohesive leadership. Nelson, how do you think, like, uh, we have about seven minutes left. And sure. last question, how do you yeah. think? No, it's, it's just, I'm so <laughs> into the information that you're telling. So, yeah, it's fascinating. Thank you very much for this sharing. And how do you think, what kind of action, actions we can take at the moment as a workplace strategist uh, to help people to go through this change, to use this opportunity. Maybe you do something at the moment uh, or, or any kind of ideas or <laughs> if, if it's possible to share, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, um, yeah, this is where you, you, you have to bring in some fun. You have to make, and this is being creative also. Um, so I'll tell you, I'll share with you guys Moscow first, and I probably shouldn't, but we have a no travel ban in, in, our, in my job. Change management is very one-on-one. Um, -on -one. It has to, you know, this is hard to do change management over a, a, a Zoom call or a, a, for us, it's Microsoft Teams, right? So one of the ideas that I had is I, I will drive my own car to these sites and we will have interaction. I know with COVID, with masks, maybe we do a, a celebration, a party. At Novartis, I'll give you an example. You have to be fun and creative. So we had a liquor license on campus. So in East Hanover, New Jersey, it's about a 250-acre campus. We had about five to 5,000 people, and we were transitioning to open space environments. We had um, amazing um, architects, Bignoli. He, had a, he built a building with no floors. 
Um, who was the other architect? Uh, Weissman, Freddie. I mean, just amazing architects. And again, we had a transition. So what we did is we, we introduced, like, we, we had the approach of a, of a new home, so real estate. So we would bring in the leaders at, you know, and bring them through the tour of the space and everything. And we, were, we would bring in the construction people and we interacted. And what we did is we had wine and cheese. We had a party. Listen, we, we, we had fun. <laughs> we had a liquor license at Novartis. And we were like, look, we're going to get drunk. Okay, we have to get these people drunk. Girls are not going to believe us. So at the end of the transition, right, but two weeks or a week before the new space, we would have a tour and we have people drink and party and music. Music's the universal language, right? We, what we did is we, we made it, we humanized the experience. We, we made it fun. We made it creative. And, and, we, 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 and we made it a point to say that we care, that we went above and beyond that the normal. And that's the thing. It has to be an unorthodox approach. It has to be different. And it has to, just like the spaces express the culture, that's what we want. These are, these are, these are expression tools, right? That that's what the design is all about, to express who we are as a culture. So the process has to express us as well. So it has to be unorthodox. It has to be fun. It has to be intelligent. And, and it has to be Sarah, engaging. It's really cool because it's uh, not only like a standard point, like interviews, workshops, and so on, what we are uh, doing usually with the clients, but it's much more, uh, I don't know, social approach uh, to, to the whole process. Yeah, yeah. And it has to be real, right? It has to be real and fun. IQ and EQ, right? Go back to that. It has to be intelligent. Right. We have the data. We, it's, it, you can call me if you have, if anyone in Russia has a problem, you can call my CEO, my, you can call Dr. Dan Vesela. I can give you his email. I have his email. Thank God. You can ask him, did it work? And you can ask leaders and, and we have the, we have the, 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 the results, but you have to make it fun. You have to make it creative and you also have to be brave. You have to be willing to be fired. I was fired 10,000 times on these projects. I told the CEO of GSK, no. We, we had a, real quick, we had a tour of the building, right? And we had a problem that people were going to work from home, just like COVID. Oh, I'm never going back to the office. And my, my understanding was we are social beings. They will come to the office in Philadelphia because the building is unbelievable. We, we created a, a magnificent piece of art. I mean, it was, it's art. It's, it had a, a, a genius bar, fitness center, rooftop. Oh. No, 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 no. I mean, it was the <laughs> mall of places and 100%, um, you know, unassigned workplace, by the way. We went from 800,000 square feet down to 200,000 square feet. So the CEO and all the leadership were walking with, with hard hats, you know, through the construction site. And, sh and she said, I'm going to email everybody that they have to come to the office. And I go, no, you're not. You can't do that. And I said it out loud. And everybody turned around and says, what? And I said, look, you can't do that. Because if you do that, then it's going to cause problems, blah, blah, blah. I said, you can fire me. If it doesn't work, you can fire me. So I put my job on the line. And I said, oh, I got to do this because it better work. And, and it did. So you have to be brave. You have to be fun and courageous. And, and you have to be willing to make mistakes. And, and I will tell you, folks in Moscow, and I've told everybody, I'm here for you. <laughs> we AECOM is here for you. This is a collaborative. And, and it's funny, we've created a, and that's why I'm so excited about this with Carola as well. We've created a, a group therapy of workplace change managers that we get to, you know, we sort of, it's therapy because we can, you can go crazy in this job. Yeah. You can go crazy. I, I'm telling, getting my mom and dad to listen to me. I have two little kids now. Now I know why I caused them so much problems when I was little. Now they're causing me problems because they're older and they don't listen. So I have to do change management with them as well. But my point is that, um, you know, we, 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 we need to be able to um, have fun with this and, and be able to deliver the change in a very authentic, fun way. That's great. Thank you very much. I will definitely party with my next client. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Wonderful. you very much, Nelson. I think we're just a little bit out okay. of time. Uh, but uh, could you please just say a few words because I believe it's very interesting and people, I will give a link for the forward project, but could you please say just a few words so people will be able to know what, what it's about because I saw it and it's a very interesting thing. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, so forward for me, so again, the company was based on, um, the W is workplace, A is analytics, R is the research, and D is the design. So, so in, in change management also, it, it is about balancing, right, that the architects don't go crazy and create these great spaces and it doesn't function well. 
it, it is about making sure the construction guys. So it is about being the, the balance and about being the, 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 the elixir of, of, of it, the elixir of, of these projects and, and the elixir of, of taking our, our people and connecting them across the globe. Because I think what right now what we're seeing also post COVID is that we need a massive sense of collaboration, breaking borders, breaking barriers, breaking cultural barriers and, and being and meeting us in the middle. So it's almost like the Venn diagram, right? Yeah. Some people like guacamole, right? Or, or I'm sorry, some people like sports. Some people don't like sports. Guacamole in the middle, everyone likes guacamole. So we're in the middle. We're that change management. We're like, you know, we're in the middle. We can, we can, we can, we bring all the sides and we, we have one centerpiece, right? And, and the advantage that we have is we have change management in our back pocket. So that's, that was the intent with, with what that forward concept is, is, is really not only trans, transitioning people in a workplace, but transitioning ourselves because work and life is so integrated. So if we're changing people in the workplace, we're actually changing their lives. So there's a forward dot life. We're actually changing life. And that's important. And then and when people say, well, are you changed? Are you saving people's lives? Are you a doctor? You no, know, not a doctor, but we are impacting positively. And we have an opportunity to impact negatively or positively. We would much rather do that positively. So for us, that concept, we want to introduce that into AECOM, into everything we do as well, because we have 90,000 employees. We have offices all, all over the world doing magnificent, massive infrastructure projects that impact people. So this is about impacting humanity at, at a greater scale, but also a cross collaboration, not amongst our team members locally. This is a global solution. This is a global solution, but with a local influence so that when you do this in Moscow, the principles are dynamically global, but they're, they're, the, the art in this, right, where artists is, is blending this into your local Russian culture so that it's blended, so that when I go to Moscow, I see the DNA, I feel it, but it's Russian, right? Yeah. And if we go to Colombia, it's Colombian, but the beauty that has the DNA integrated, so that integration is the, the magic sauce. That's cool, and it's called the changes of aim, uh, of change uh, initiative, right? Sorry, it's it's the agent, agents of change, uh, like uh, the yeah. So 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 right. So I call myself an agent of change, right? And and we all we all then become would we we start creating agents of change that not only change the, if we're changing things in the workplace correctly, we are impacting people's lives correctly. And then, and then we become change, change agents in our own families. Um, I've done it myself, like with my you know, wife and family and my father. And, and we, start change, we start having a, a very different perspective and how we seek we can help and change people, right? And then all of a sudden, we're all working off the same, singing off the same sheet of music, saying, look, the new paradigm for, for in my, pers my world, my view of the world is we're going to a new way of working, of being, of living, of interaction. Let's start in a workplace, but you know, for us, it's like we, there's a new paradigm that's going. We can change this collectively for humanity. We, we need to make a very big leap here. And I think that's the notion of, of util utilizing the change management and really focusing on life itself. I love it. I love it. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, thank for, you for sharing. This. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I, I speak too much. I tried not to drink too much coffee, you know, <laughs> or, or else no one would understand me. So I hope that, um, you know, the only word I said in Russian was cultura because it's the same in Spanish. <laughs> yes. So I need to learn some Russian. So I, I hope I, I, can, I can visit there one day and uh, we'll do this. We'll be uh, really one -on -one. happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much uh, for ones uh, who joined us. Thank you, Nelson. And uh, yeah, I hope I hope to see you in Moscow soon. <laughs> yes, let's make that let's make that a, a, a priority, an objective. <laughs>